So far in the Young People in Politics series, we've talked to a member of every major political party, both North and South of Ireland. And while at times it seemed like the only way to engage in political discourse was to pick a party and start fighting your corner, there has and always has been an alternative. Most people, even those in political parties, will tell you that they do not agree with everything their party has done, whether that is in relation to past or present political actions. So far, we've seen individuals who have reconciled with that fact and chosen to commit to a party regardless because they view it as the best proponent to promoting change. I wanted to see the other side of the argument though. Why don't some politically active young people get involved in a political party? What are the benefits to having no political affiliation and what do they hope to achieve outside the political party sphere in the realm of politics? In order to understand the answers behind some of these questions, I sat down with three politically active but not politically party affiliated young people who engage in the political sphere in a range of different ways. Um, my own kind of political involvement would stem from my involvement with the Progressive Brief website, um, which I'm a co-founder of along with my friend Ben Quigley. And uh, it's a fairly well-known website, particularly amongst young people in the progressive political sphere. Um, stemming from my involvement in that website, then I've written a number of articles for the Irish Examiner, the Journal.ie, and um, done a couple of radio appearances. So my name is Roisin Madden. I am the founder and current chairperson of DCU Politics Society, non-party affiliated society in DCU. And we seek to encourage young people to just engage with the political discourse and just figure out where they stand on all things politics and social justice. My name is Eric Ahige, I'm 19, studying uh, corporate law at NUI Galway. In terms of the political sphere and how I interact with it, I'd say it's mainly through the podcast that myself and uh, a co-host, uh, Luke Casserly, uh, we, we spearhead. It's called the Political Incorrectors Podcast. Uh, beyond that, I think I've been involved with student unionism in the past. I was the former equality officer of the Irish Second Level Students Union. I'm currently the political coordinator of Black and Irish, uh, an organization that aims to uplift and represent underrepresented voices within the Black Irish community here in Ireland. I think I've always been a believer that there must be some talk sort of political gene because I don't think there was ever any possibility that I wasn't going to be passionately interested in politics. But I think, as is probably the case with many people in my age vicinity, um, the crash and the surrounding kind of political and economic debris um, that followed it really from 2008 to 2013. And of course, we had a number of elections uh, occurring around that period was really the catalyst for my political, um, my original political engagement. My household was quite, um, politics was quite in, immersed in my household. So my mom first revealed me to politics when talking about affairs in Nigeria because she's of Nigerian descent. And just hearing stories that she told me is what really sparked an interest in politics and how it affected society. Thereafter, I'd say my, my involvement with the Irish Second Level Students Union is what really kind of immersed me in Irish politics because um, I find with young people, myself included, politics in uh, America, let's say for instance, or, or England is quite appealing. For me, Nigeria was quite a exciting and exhilarating you know, to hear political stories from that country. But here in Ireland, I don't know, politics was somewhat mundane or tedious as per the conversations that I had with young people and as per how I saw it. So with the Irish Second Level Students Union, I was working within a radius that allowed me to be in close proximity with many decision makers and political stakeholders in the country. So all of a sudden, uh, it kickstarted somewhat of an interest in Irish politics uh, here in Ireland. So that I think those two things really influenced it. I was lucky that I grew up in a household where, you know, at the kitchen table, we just always just talked about the news. Like, God forbid we would miss the 6 p.m. like news. We just all, I always knew what was going on. And I always, I did, I did talk about it in school, even in primary and secondary school, the little bits that I did know, and it always mattered to me. I remember a specific turning point, I think, when I realized how much I 
I in, enjoyed politics or how relevant it was, I think it was 2016, which is, we all know, was a crash year for everyone. But I, I, I was really, I, I would have been 16 at the time, and I was really like bombarded by this whole the election in America and obviously Brexit. And I was literally having, I was really anxious about what this um, Brexit vote was going to mean for Ireland. I think I was probably studying um, economics at the time and I was just kind of getting to know things about trade, international relations and stuff like that. Um, so I suppose that would have been the turning point when I really realised what, what, what or how relevant it was or is, I suppose. Many people say who might follow you on Twitter will know that you're very politically opinionated online. And, you know, it probably goes against some of the norms that maybe we would have seen with, you know, uh, journalists and whatnot. I, I don't know if you lump yourself in with that sort of brand, but given the amount of, you know, work you've done on the Progressive Brief and, you know, pushing more young people to get their voices heard through that platform and whatnot, it, it kind of begs the question then, why haven't you sort of nailed your colours, colours to the mast and joined a political party? Yeah, I mean, it's a question I ask myself, to be honest with you, but um, as cliched as it sounds, I do think it comes down to the fact that um, I think that I'm genuinely more interested in policy than politics. And even back then, I was more interested in reading The Economist or um, some sort of simplified policy paper on some Cliff Notes type <laughs> political site or, you know, um, uh, even uh, some academic stuff and obviously um, political books than I was following the ins and outs of parliamentary parties or the electoral debates or you know the goings on of the political gossip or you know this type of, this type of stuff so I never really found um, myself feeling a need to join a political party because I've been lucky enough to be presented with so many other opportunities that allow me to deal with policy and advocate for specific policies I mean that that sort of explains why I'm happy enough to be in the position where I am um, involved in a number of journalistic exploits and advocacy exploits and um, monitoring exploits. But also, I suppose, to, to be more negative for a second, um, I don't, I, there is no, currently there is no political party um, or there is no political party's youth wing that uh, specifically appeals to me um, a sufficient amount to make me want to actually um, join them. I think I'm still locating uh, where on the political spectrum my view uh, re resides. Uh, I'm still trying to take in uh, texts from different people, uh, writing from different people who believe in particularly different beliefs. So until I'm able to commit to a, a set of, I think, already established political beliefs, it wouldn't be fair on me or the party for me to join any particular political party. Beyond that, I really dislike dogma. <laughs> I hate when people uh, you know, commit to things dogmatically and are unwilling to question whether what they're committing to is problematic in any way. And I think the party political process is known for politicians, you know, avoiding questions that are critical of their own party. And I'm just, I have, I have such a reverence for, uh, for striving towards objectivity that I don't know if I'd allow myself, <laughs> you know, to step into that realm. I think, you know, with politics, you know, you have a party that has its own set of beliefs, its value system. You have your own personal value system. From any politician I spoke to or anyone interested in, in politics that I spoke to about joining a party, they've always said that, you know, there's a sense of compromise involved with joining a party because particular personal views that you hold on to that the party doesn't, you have to let go of. I like to coin the term, the benevolent uh, a compromise. You're compromising in good faith because you want to join the party and immerse yourself in the system. And I, I like freedom and I like liberty to express things as I see them. And I think compromising that freedom, although it's in good faith when joining a party, is something that you really need to be ready to commit to and know that it's going to result and manifest itself in a positive way for yourself and the society you hope to impact when joining a party. Well, I'll be honest with you. I, the reason, um, first of all, the reason the DCU says uh, politics society is apolitical is because we don't want to encourage, we, we, we want to encourage people to join things when they feel like they know enough. And that's the reason that I haven't joined any societies because, or, or any um, party, I mean, but, um, excuse me, is because I just feel like I align enough to um, to join anyone. And I, I see, I think we've all seen down to the years, the problems of like um, unbettered allegiance to political parties. I don't like the, the idea that we've had the same political parties in government all our life. And I, I don't want to pledge my allegiance to one because I don't, I don't believe in parties. I believe in people. I believe in the candidates that I vote for. The candidates I vote for change. I think I voted in probably two elections now. Um, you know, it, it, it changes every year. So um, 
it depends on who's in my in my area and what they what they stand for at the time i don't necessarily believe in parties because I, I really think that there, there are some great people in some really bad parties and there are some really bad people in some really good parties too if that makes any sense at all Yeah, one of the things that uh, people in youth political parties will say is that, you know, it offers them almost, you know, they're only a phone call or a meeting away from, you know, talking to someone who's in elected office. What is it about being non-politically affiliated that is so appealing? Liberty. <laughs> I think it's, it's simply the freedom to act as you will. Like if we look uh, throughout the 20th century, look at and, you know, any major fundamental change that occurred within the global society, be that the fight against colonial, colonialism in Africa, segregation, the fight against it in America, the fight for you know, freedom in India, uh, led by Mahatma Gandhi, Gandhi, the movement, all of the major activists of these movements were not politically affiliated. Can we imagine how those movements would have went had they been tied to a particular political party you know it would have changed the shape of these these movements because the seminal activists of these movements would not have had the freedom and liberty that they had to act in the manner that they did to obtain and achieve their goals there is a place for politics undoubtedly you know i stated earlier about how politics fascinates me you know politics involves law creating which regulates our actions as human beings but the political party process with its flaws is good but i think it restricts liberty to some extent for people who want to have the liberty to go out there and speak in the way that they like to speak about the problems of our society. So we definitely need the, the system as it is. But I think what's appealing when it comes to uh, activism generally is the fact that you can say what you wish and you don't have any any kind of uh, standard uh, to, to, to reach, nor do you have any standard that um, you are expected not to fall below uh, as per the definition of a standard uh, by a party. <laughs> I think the most obvious one is that you'd never have uh, even the slightest inclination to monitor your speech um, uh, to, to make it palatable to a political party. I mean, we've seen examples of that um, even in recent months with political parties calling to doorsteps, um, reprimanding uh, youth members about about their speech. But yeah, like I, 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 I learned from a young age um, from one of my initial journalistic um, endeavors uh, and again as cliched as it sounds about the importance of integrity because if you don't actually believe what you're standing for if you don't believe what you perpetuate on a daily basis then you know it, it, it eventually gives up because you're not going to be um, as passionate about it you know deep within yourself that you don't actually believe in it i think it's choice i think you know everyone should be able to be feel independent no one should feel you know um that they have to vote a certain way of course like we live in a democracy um but I think it's having, for me personally, I think it's, it's, it's you know, I give everyone a shot if a social democrat comes to my door, if a member of Sinn Féin comes to my door, or an independent comes to my door, I listen to them all equally and I don't have any, not to say that anyone does else, anyone else has any stigma, but we all kind of know or feel like um, we're leaning a certain way when an election, when an election is looming, we're either one party or another, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the benefits for me really is that I, I feel personally on election day that I voted in the best way possible because I have, I'm voting for someone who definitely, um, you know, have ignored. I've listened to everyone. And I've weighed up the pros and cons of each. Um, so that would be what I feel personally. Anyway, because I can only speak from my own personal experience. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do like being politically kind of neutral, like I say in in our events. Um, because I think it's really important. Politics for me is all about being able to criticize and to be criticized. And I think when you are a political, you do even criticize your own thoughts. Like when sometimes I lean towards, um, you know, Fine Gael or Sinn Fein, the opposite way, complete oh, the opposite directions on on certain on certain things. And then it, it kind of allows being being neutral. Kind of allows me to reflect and be like, they're not perfect though. And I think that's really really important because that to me is what politics is all about. Where do you see, I know you've actually, you've written a bit on, you know, the rise of populism, not only within Ireland, but also abroad as well. Where mm. do you see sort of politics going in the future? And then the second part of that question is, where would you like to see politics go in the future? My, my hope is that Ireland does not become a United States with the polarization of the extremes, um, whether that be on the left or right. 
uh, similar enough in the UK really between the it's an effective two party system with um, Labour on the left and uh, the uh, Conservatives on the right. I think that my hope would be that, as I say, we don't see this coalescing around Fianna Gael and Sinn Féin and that we see a rejuvenation of the likes of Fianna Fáil, Labour, um, the Greens, uh, the Social Democrats to solidify their stances because I don't want to grow up living in a country where you're either going to be a Sinn Féiner or a Fianna Gaeler and there's nobody of any uh, actual tangible importance um, in between in the political, political sphere. Am I optimistic? Not really. The polling data and just my sense is that you know, people, um, people, I, I was reading a report recently enough which showed that, you know, the, the, the single greatest motivator during electoral periods is not inspiring the electorate about your policies or showing great courage of conviction in the past. It's actually using fear of the opposition as a motivator. And so we see this where, whereby a lot of the people that are, are fervent Sinn Féin supporters actually have more of a disdain for Fianna Gael than they do a passionate support for the policies of Sinn Féin and the, the country holds true in, in many cases as well. So I, I mean this is something that we're just going to have to work towards uh, avoiding I think but I wouldn't be too optimistic about it happening. Well I suppose you always have to say especially in recent years and recent elections politics is really really unpredictable. I don't know, like they say, a week is a long time in politics, God forbid, a couple of years, so God, I really don't know. Um, I think, you're, I'm definitely seeing a left-leaning government. Um, I think that's what I, I think that's what I hope for at the moment, um, although I can't be, be too sure. Um, in terms of parties, I won't, I won't speculate. I don't, I, I, like if there was an election tomorrow, I still couldn't call who would be in there because, you know, there, there is a reason this time around that it's still been called and, and still a gale in there, there, there are. Um, although I do think though the pandemic has had a huge and the health crisis, I don't know, the future of politics, I would say, I'm not going to say it's definitely left, but I think it's definitely lefter, if that makes sense. And I also hope it's lefter. I think the general election, uh, early 2020, signified a major shift in our politics here in Ireland. Um, I think the youth turnout is undoubtedly what led things to conclude in the way they did, electorally speaking. So I think I definitely see young people becoming more politically uh, engaged. And I think young people are more politically engaged now than they ever were in the history of the state. I think this is partly due to the internet and digitization, but it's also due to the fact that a lot of the issues in question right now are ones that are going to affect young people greatly. So I think we're going to see an increase in youth participation, or, or at least I hope we do. Um, but in terms of the conversation and dialogue we have about politics here in Ireland, and with the entrance of more young people into parliament, which is something that, that I hope we see, I definitely see a shift in the conversation and the culture and our priorities. Whereas once we would have prioritized things like religion and uh, particular political opinions, I think now the dynamics and the culture are changing. And with that, a political conversation will change also. Um, so this is this is how I see it going. And I, I see the general election as a sign, a herald that signifies this. In terms of where I like to see politics going, I like politics here in Ireland to be an inclusive type of politics, one that encompasses different voices. In terms of the culture of politics, I, I, I think when it comes to external influences like America and England, we need to ensure that we take the good from those, polit that, those political cultures, but refrain from adopting the bad. So I love for, for us to appreciate diversity in opinions, for us not to um, seclude or alienate people for views that they have, which are not hateful, but we may disagree with, for us to encourage speech and dialogue about how we can move forward. And in the process of doing that, appreciate diversity, not only in terms of its physical manifestation, be it in the form of an ethnic minority or someone who's a woman, who are underrepresented groups in our political system, but people who have diversity of opinions too, because I think it's a plethora of opinions that see the development of any political system. And I hope our system develops um, in a great way over the next while. In conclusion, overall, the main reason for remaining politically non-affiliated was down to freedom of expression and the freedom of association. And if the three people I talked to in this video prove just one thing, it's that party affiliation is not a necessity to be politically engaged, and political non-affiliation certainly provides an alternative to those who are either not ready or have no intention of committing to a singular party. Where do you see yourself going in the future of the realm of politics? 
in the future of the realm of politics that I'm always going to be um, an active citizen. I'm always going to, you know, I'm always going to vote if I have the opportunity to 100%. Um, I don't know if I'll go into politics. I, I thought about it. My dad ran for local elections once back in the day. Um, didn't get it. I don't know. I think, that, I don't know. I, sometimes I think I'd like to be a senator. Um, you know, a, a bit of change, but no, I don't, I don't want to say not, I don't want to say not too much responsibility because that kind of defeats the whole purpose. Um, I don't know where I'm going to be. God, God only knows, like they say, a week's a long time. Um, um, so hopefully, I'll be somewhere where I can make a difference on the inside, if that makes any sense. Like a background man, maybe. I don't know if I'd be good enough to be at the front, if I'd be able for all that criticism and do need to deserve criticism, criticism too. It's what I like about our system. Um, so I don't know is the, is the answer, which God only knows. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, you, you'd be lying if you said you didn't see yourself, um, you know, possibly running for election in the future. But, um, you know, due to the complexities of, of that when not involved in a party, um, I definitely have to contemplate over the possibility of that, and I have. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I can't tell you, uh, I can tell you something now, but a good friend called Life might have a different plan for me, and she might bring me in a different direction. So. Um, I'm not too sure. I definitely hope to be involved, whether immediately within the sphere or uh, just within the radius, but in close proximity to the sphere to see what I can do with politics to affect a change in society that's good for the wider Irish society. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I know I've been involved in journalism probably going on five years now since I was about 15, but I, I never really thought that it was going to be um, what I ended up doing. I'm, I mean, I, I have I have no plans, obviously, as you as you can probably tell, to join any youth political party. So um, I'll just take it as it goes. And like uh, as I say, I think when like what I really enjoy about politics, to be honest with you, is the debate aspect of it, and you know, um, engaging with people in a genuinely constructive manner and holding a policy opinion on the basis of data, and then finding out from another person, actually, do you know what? I might have been wrong on that one constantly evolving so I think I'm just going to um, continue doing that and uh, see where it takes me.